Yellowstone National Park is the oldest, most significant, and most well-known national park in the United States. It features one of the most diversified natural wonder collections in the United States. Yellowstone is one of North America's most valuable assets, with its geothermal characteristics, numerous wildlife, and more than two million acres of wilderness. However, one of the park's authorities has expressed concern that this beautiful spot would soon become dangerous. What precisely is happening in Yellowstone? What may be the impending danger? Today's video will bring you an alert issued by Yellowstone National Park authorities about an impending natural disaster. The Yellowstone region was initially seen by an American, John Calter, a veteran of the Lewis and Clark expedition. Surprisingly, after years in the woods, Calter started to inform people about the area's tremendous geothermal activity. Few believed his extraordinary claims, and the establishment was scorned as cult as hell. It's easy to see why some were skeptical. The area seemed to be too lovely to be true. The Grand Canyon of Yellowstone, as it is officially known, was produced by river erosion. It has a depth of over a thousand feet, a width of 1,500 to 4,000 feet, and a length of over 20 miles. Indeed, the view of the canyon from Yellowstone's highest point is one of the most breathtaking in the park. However, this is simply the tip of the iceberg. Yellowstone National Park has a very diverse landscape. It includes almost half of all hydrothermal features in the world. The National Park has about 10,000 hydrothermal phenomena, including hot springs, mud pots, fumaroles, travertine terraces, and geysers. The gorgeous hues of these pools of water are caused by bacteria called thermophiles, which adore heat and live within them. Yellowstone National Park is 3,472 square miles in size and is situated in the northwest region of the United States. Yellowstone National Park is spread over three states. It is located mainly in northern Wyoming, southern Montana, and eastern Idaho, and has the world's highest concentration of hydrothermal characteristics. Yellowstone is rich and has been supplied for years. For example, the Obsidian Cliff is a massive outcrop of black volcanic rock found on the way between the Norris Geyser Basin and the Mammoth Hot Springs. Although it was an important place for the ancient people, it has been prohibited by the public to prevent theft. With the most significant supply of high-grade obsidian in North America, a kind of volcanic glass created by the rapid cooling of lava that has the sharpest edge of any natural material on Earth, ten times more sensitive than a razor blade. Interestingly, when Yellowstone National Park was founded and became law, many congressmen supported it, even though they considered the harsh and remote terrain to provide little economic value. On the other hand, the creation of the National Park has proved to be a watershed point in how the United States administers its wildlife. Grizzly bears, wolves, lynx foxes, moose, and elk may all be found here. But don't be deceived by their attractiveness. These animals are dangerous and should not be approached for your protection. You must keep at least 100 yards from bears and wolves, and also at least 25 yards from other huge animals according to park regulations. However, Yellowstone has something even more dangerous that you cannot escape when it comes after you. Yellowstone is a volcanic environment, so don't be deceived by its breathtaking beauty. A gigantic five-mile deep pool of hot lava sits under the park, driven by a towering plume of molten rock rushing up from hundreds of miles below. The heat from hot springs and geysers must originate from somewhere, and the source is molten rock as magma rises into the chamber and cools the earth above. Regularly, it increases and falls. The Yellowstone volcano is so strong that geologists call it a supervolcano. It is capable of supereruptions, which are the most significant possible eruptions. 
they have the potential to cause considerable harm. Anything having a magnitude of 8 or greater on the Volcanic Explosivity Index is considered a super eruption. 240 cubic miles of material is expelled in at least 1,000 cubic kilometers. These super eruptions are thousands of times more potent than the most intense previous eruptions. Magma, or molten rock from under the Earth's crust, is close to the surface in the Yellowstone's region. This relatively shallow mass of magma is the product of mantle heat convection. As magma plumes ascend through the mantle, they melt rocks in the crust, forming magma reservoirs of partly molten and partly solid rock. Hotspot volcanism is caused by mantle plumes transporting heat from the mantle to the crust. While you may love your visit to Yellowstone today, the massive volcano underneath it has erupted violently three times, annihilating any creature unfortunate enough to be nearby. The first happened 2.1 million years ago and was one of the biggest humanity had ever seen. Ash reached Missouri after covering 5,790 square miles. The total amount of volcanic material ejected is expected to be 6,000 times that of Washington's Mounts and Helens eruption in 1980. The second eruption happened about 1.3 million years ago on the western edge of the caldera formed by the first. The third and most recent happened 664,000 years ago. It discharged so much debris that it created Yellowstone Calder, a 34-mile by 50-mile hole in the Earth. While Yellowstone no longer produces super eruptions, it does continue to make smaller ones. Around 80 of these have been recorded. One of these relatively modest eruptions generated what is now Yellowstone Lake's West Thumb around 174,000 years ago. During and after these explosive eruptions, massive lava flows of vicious rhyolitic lava and less luminous basal lava essentially covered the caldera floor and surrounding area. The 70,000-year-old pitchstone rhyolite flow in Yellowstone National Park's southwest corner is the youngest of these lava flows. Even though Yellowstone has no visible activity, the volcano is active and working away in the shadows. The shallow magma body's pressure revived two domes inside the Yellowstone caldera. Consequentially, magma might lie 3 to 8 miles under Sour Creek Dome and 8 to 12 miles beneath Mallard Lake Dome. Both domes expand and contract as the amount of magma, or hydrothermal fluid underneath them, rises and falls. The caldera floor rises and falls, although not as dramatically as the two domes. Over the past century, net inflation has pushed the caldera floor southward. Consequentially, the southern Yellowstone Lake's shores have eroded, and the trees now stand in the water. We've lately been able to trace the activities of Yellowstone Volcano owing to scientific monitoring. In Pelican Valley, for example, researchers discovered considerable ground displacement along the caldera's central axis between the famous Old Faithful and White Lake. They started monitoring likely ground deformation in 1975 by applying vertical motion analysis of ground benchmarks. The scans revealed an extraordinary increase in caldera by more than a meter in only 10 years. On the other hand, additional GPS data indicated that the caldera suffered subsidence or sinking until 2005, when it returned to extreme rising. The most excellent vertical movement was seen at the White Lake GPS station on the caldera's eastern rim, where the total uplift from 2004 to 2010 was around 27 centimeters. The cause of the uplift is assumed to be the passage of the deep hydrothermal fluids or molten rock into the shallow crust magma system at a depth of around 10 kilometers under the surface. Throughout the planet's history, at least 47 super eruptions have been observed. 
The most recent super eruption was the Orani eruption of New Zealand's top volcano, also known as the Kawakawa eruption or the Kawakawa Orani event. It happened about 26,500 years ago, during the late Pleistocene. Another happened during the Tober eruption, 74,000 years ago, which created a 10-year-long winter and almost wiped off humanity. Yellowstone, on the other hand, is home to three of them. Scientists have attempted to predict when volcanoes will erupt, but it is still conceivable for one to catch everyone off guard. So what happens if Yellowstone's supervolcano erupts a fourth time? Fortunately, the volcano will almost surely provide warnings. The signs will be more intense since it is a major eruption. The whole park will definitely suffer considerable seismic activity at first. Before an explosion, the tremors might take weeks or months to break away the rocks above the magma. This will allow everyone enough time to depart for their life. Scientists estimate that at least 230 cubic kilometers of debris will be released. Everything in the path of the lava flow will be destroyed, and it might last weeks or even months. People in a park's immediate vicinity will experience the brunt of the lava's damage. A far greater population, however, will be harmed by something else. Volcanic ash. In reality, volcanic ash will cause the most damage, with around one-third of all elements from the big eruption ending up in the sky. Volcanic ash is a terrible combination of shattered rock and glass that travels far because the tremendous energy of the explosion propels it miles into the air and scatters it throughout the land. Using historical ash deposition and rigorous modeling, some experts anticipated that a Yellowstone mega-eruption would produce a vast, lethal umbrella cloud that would spread in all directions. It would cover up to three feet of ash, causing devastation in regions like Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, and Utah. Residents in the Midwest will fare better, although they will only get a few inches of ash, while both coastlines will receive far less. The exact distribution would be governed by time and weather patterns. Volcanic ash is incredibly destructive, capable of overpowering and killing humans, plants, and animals. A significant portion will also crush buildings, causing roofs to collapse and lock people within. Even a few inches of ash, as much of the nation is prone to, may destroy crops, clog highways, and cause severe respiratory issues. Flying would be impossible since most of North America's airspace would be blocked off. It would be hard to maintain an adequate supply of aids, and aid personnel would be unable to travel about the nation. Intriguingly, a Yellowstone eruption will impact you no matter where you are because of its effects on the global climate. The planet's temperature will decrease, which may seem counterintuitive considering that the volcano would blast hot materials into the air, which should raise the temperature. But here's how it works. Volcanoes, you know, may spray sulfur aerosols into the sky, which reflect sunlight and chill the climate. Because these particles will not last long in the atmosphere, the impact will be brief but powerful. When Mount Pinatubo erupted in 1991, the Earth cooled by around 1 degree Celsius for a few years. A Yellowstone eruption is several orders of magnitude greater than this one. So you can probably picture the influence on the climate. What are your thoughts about the Yellowstone volcano? Leave a comment, and if you like the video, give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.